In this video I'm going to show you how to build a sign up screen with Plutter and how to hook that sign up screen up with Firebase authentication in order to create accounts and also how to save user data for those accounts in a Firebase Firestore database. Ok so let's get started. Since our sign up screen is going to have customized text fields but they're all going to look the same, we're first going to create a reusable widget for a text field. From the parent we're going to pass in a text editing controller. We're also going to pass a label, which is used to name our fields. We're also going to need to know if the field is a password or not. If we want any special keyboard features, we're also going to pass in a keyboard type. All of these fields are going to have to be validated, so we're going to pass in a validator. And since these fields are going to be passed from the parent, we're going to have them all initialized from the constructor. Let's get started with the drawing of the widget. We're going to have padding from the left and the right side. And in there, since we're going to use a form, we're going to have a text form field. We're going to set the controller, and we're going to use that controller later to access the values of the fields when we're trying to sign our user up. Then we're going to put a nice decoration on our text field to make it look better. And we're also going to set the label field here. Then we're going to set the rest of the properties, like keyboard type, obscure text, which is just password, and also the validator. Now let's start implementing the actual page. So first let's wrap this whole list view in a form. And we're going to use this form to later validate all of the data at once. But in order to do that we need to create a form key. And now we just have to assign this form key to our form. And we should be done. So now let's initialize all of the text editing controllers we're going to use to gather up all of the values in our form. And now let's draw all of the widgets. So first we're going to have the name field. And of course we're going to put the name controller there. And we're going to put a required validator there. And the required validator is just going to be a validator shared between multiple text fields. Because all of them are going to be required. So now let's make it a function. And put in a text parameter. And if that text is null or if it's empty. Then we're just going to return an error saying this field is required. If everything is good, we're just going to return null and no errors are going to be displayed. Ok, now we can continue with other fields. So the email field is going to be pretty much the same as the name field, but we're going to pass in a different keyboard type so the user will get some keyboard options that make it easier for them to input their email. Ok, so now onto the password field. We're also going to put in a controller, but we're going to set the password property to true. But now onto the confirm password field. There we're going to have a different validator which we're going to call confirm password validator. And this validator should also check for the required requirement, but it should also check if the two passwords we inputted match. That's very important since you don't want your users to mistype their password. And lastly we're going to set the password property to true. And after that's done we're going to add a gap. And then below it we're going to put the submit button. And when that submit button is pressed, we're going to check for the form state in the key. And if we have a state, then we're going to try to validate the form. Let's just put some padding into the button. And that should be it for drawing. And now when we run the app, we can try it out and see if all of this works, if the form works. So when I press on the submit button, I get the form validated. And now when I put in a name and press the submit button again, I'm going to see that validation works properly. When I put in a field, it doesn't show an error. So now let's make sure all of the fields are good and valid. And then when we press the submit button, we can see that there are no errors happening. But also you can see that the confirm password validator is working when the passwords do not match. Okay, now it's time to finish the screen. Let's add a loading property that we're going to use to track whether the user is trying to sign up or not. And now let's write the logic for signing the user up. So we're going to put that in the sign up method. And now let's set the state of loading to true. And here everything is going to be wrapped in a try block. So here we're going to use the Firebase authentication instance to try to sign up the user with the email and the password they inputted. And if that is successful, then we're going to go and insert this user's data into a Firebase Firestore collection. So we're going to put in the same pieces of data we did in our previous tutorials. We're going to put in the image, we're going to put in the email, and we're going to put the name of the user there. And after that is done, we're going to show a dialog to the user that's going to tell them that they managed to sign up. And after we show the dialog, 
we can just close the sign up page. Okay, so now it's time to catch the errors. So just as previously, we're going to use the Firebase Auth exception and we're going to add handling of the error to a separate method to keep the code clean. So here we're pretty much going to use the same method. We're going to use switch case on the error code in order to construct a user friendly message. And once we have that message, we're just going to display it using the show dialog method. The only thing left to do before running the app is showing the loading indicator when we're loading and also hiding the sign up button so the user doesn't spam the button many times. Okay, so when we run the app, we can now try to sign up a user. Let's first give it all of the valid information so we can see if sign up actually works. So let's give it a valid email. Let's give it a simple password of 123456. The same thing for confirm password and submit. And as you can see, it says here that our user was signed up successfully. But now let's see what happens when we enter an invalid email. Yeah, we get an error in a pop-up that says that the email was not valid. But this is not validated on the client side. It's validated by Firebase. And the way we get to display that nice message is due to us converting the error codes returned from Firebase into user-friendly messages. And also when we input a very weak password, like a one character password, Firebase is also going to complain. And now when we go into the Firebase console, we can see the user we just created. And also when we go into Cloud Firestore, you can also find the new user. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial.